Hey guys, welcome back to another Switch 001 video. And today we are at Montreal Airport. Yeah, this is Montreal Storval Airport. Today I'm going to recreate Air Canada Flight 143. Now this happened in 1983 and a 767. This makes me realize how old the 767 actually is, by the way. I mean, this is like, oh damn, this happened a long, long time ago. Whatever. So basically, a 767 was on its way from Montreal to Edmonton. And basically, Basically, what happened quite midway was the plane ran out of fuel, which is not too good. And the thing is that Montreal, especially north of the cities, is pretty dead. And obviously, the crew had a hard time finding the airport. Now, obviously, this kind of emergency starts on ground already. So the thing is, there was basically a calculation error of fuel. There was not enough fuel on board. There we go. Maybe one hour and 20 minutes. And the amount of fuel that we have right now in this plane is not enough to actually fly to Edmonton. And I've died again. And the problem is that I don't really have an Air Canada livery for this thing. So, yeah, bruh. Bruh moment, moment there. So, you know what? Let's just take off. Fly for a few hours, of course, and not cheat ourselves to the location. And then, let's actually run out of fuel and, uh, I'm gonna try to make a successful emergency landing with this thing. There we go. Alright, we have taken off successfully. That was a very nice rotation. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh oh. So, yeah, let's actually skip some time and go to Red Lake. Lake, which is where uh, the plane ended up running out of fuel. Red Lake, Ontario. Alright, so here we are at 41,000 feet over Red Lake, Ontario. Actually, there is an airport right under us. But now, what happens? Oh no, maybe we will run out of fuel, which is exactly what happened. Alright, so we have actually run out of fuel. Let's see what happens. Now, in our case, both engines die immediately. But actually, in the real flight, the left engine died before the right engine, but both died eventually, I guess. Time for the ram air turbine to come out. It has come out, and we might might get power back eventually. I mean, at least we have um, control, I guess. That's kind of the most important thing. I mean, the screens are dead. That's not too good. Maybe we should get that working. Problem is that we don't have any instruments, and this is a very, very quiet flight, isn't it? Look at that. Wing flex. That actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> actually, the plane kept flying for another 100 nautical miles, which is quite a lot and quite interesting. Engines are dead, but at least we have control, and we uh, still have some manual gauges in here unlike the, you know, 737 Maxes and those other fancy aircraft with thick screens. We still have our manual gauges that can show us altitude and speed and vertical speed and heading, which is very important still. Right, we are actually sinking at quite a big rate. I don't really like that since we really do have to descend for another 100 miles, obviously nautical miles. And this is really far out in the middle of nowhere. Somewhere out there is the airport that we are heading toward. Now, you know what? Let's actually cheat some time, I guess, because... Why not? Actually, the pilot in this plane was a very experienced glider pilot, which obviously, uh... You know. And here we are. This is the famous lake, I guess. And this is the famous airport that we're going to land at. Now, this is Gimli Industrial Park. And what is special about this airport is that it is not an airport anymore. And it was not even an airport anymore in 1983. Actually, it was a former Air Force base for Canada. I don't know. Actually, they built a go-kart track on that airport tarmac. So, yeah, they have a drag racing thing on the runway. And they even had that back in 1983. And so the pilot had to make sure not to run over some, you know, go-karts, which is always something that you want to do in an airplane. Now, let's go ahead and uh, skip time a little bit. Well, yeah, the landing conditions were really bad, but this thing still had a runway, and that's pretty much the most important thing, isn't it? Now, let's go ahead and uh, get into some descending action, and uh, this is going to be quite interesting. Now, another problem is obviously uh, deploying gear, which is not always easy, especially when you have run out of power. Obviously, you can always put out gear with gravity, but the problem here actually was that the thing is nose gear didn't come out, so the plane had to land without nose gear. Now, let's see how we're doing. Oh, we are very, very high. So, the thing is, that actually was the case in real life, and the plane was also a bit too fast, and so what the pilot did was a forward side slip, which is a very uh, interesting thing. It's kind of drifting a plane in midair, kind of, isn't it? So, uh, what 
you do is basically you go right with the rudder, for example, and go left with the aileron, and you hope to not die. And this actually uh, makes your plane stop a lot quicker, I, I hope, <laughs> because you have a lot more drag. Oh, no. <laughs> Am I doing this right? Oh, yeah. No, calm down. Calm down. No worries. This is all good. Yep, this is what I mean. We are losing speed so quickly. That seems to work out. It does not look very convenient. No, I think I'm, I'm doing this wrong, but whatever. Oof. Okay, another drift. Oh, sorry, guys. Here we go. We are losing quite a lot of altitude, which is good. Now, we actually need to focus on getting that gear down. Let's activate alternate gear. Oh, my goodness. There we go. And gear should come out. Yes, but nose gear should not come out. That's what I'm trying to have here. All right. No, nose gear is coming. No. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this is not how this looked like, but all right. Let's just actually come in for a landing. We need to land real quick. So, let's go. Yeah, let's try not to, you know, chop off our vertical stabilizer as that is most probably something that you want to, you know, kind of avoid. Side slip. Now, the gear is actually stuck. We have a major problem here. For some reason, it doesn't want to work anymore, but uh, this will work out, right? Okay, we are coming in with quite an insane speed. Let's land on this uh, concrete part, actually, as that one is quite longer. You might have a better chance of surviving there. One last slip. There we go. Drifting in midair again. Yeah, this looks quite good. This is looking good. Oh, God. Yeah, there's some go-kart stuff there. That's not good. Go away. Oh, no. Go away, please. <laughs> Oh, that was a landing. That was a landing. Oh, shoot. Now let's break. Our nose gear actually uh, came out, which was quite a miracle. This is actually uh, the drag racing part, isn't it? This plane is not breaking, which is bad. Oof. Now, out of reflex, I uh, almost activated reverse thrust, which <laughs> was probably maybe not a good idea since our engines are kind of, you know, not working. But this actually kind of worked out, didn't it? I mean, why not, I guess? Open all the windows. There we go. I have windows. I mean, doors and evacuate the airplane. Now we have actually survived this, which is kind of surprising, especially for my level of pilot skill. I do want to see if we crashed into any kind of trucks or something. Oh, oh. Oh, rip. Oh, rip. Caravan. <laughs> oh, God. But that was actually quite a smooth landing, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, look at that approach. That side slip. This is actually the side slip done right. That looked quite well. That that looked like good. That, that looked quite good. Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, landing, I guess. I mean, yeah. And here we crash into some barriers, which you always want to not do, but we did it. And here's some drag racing track or something, whatever. Yeah, looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. Jeez. Oh, frick. Yeah, I'm very confident that this worked out quite well, uh, I guess. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night.